hopefully we're coming back. Okay, uh, hopefully you can hear me now. Sorry about that. Uh, we've got a new microphone system, uh, brand new. It's a huge monster in front of me, which is hopefully going to uh, make uh, some editing changes more easy. So sorry about that, um, but we'll get that right from now on, hopefully. Yes, yeah, so I wasn't singing and dancing last night. I was falling asleep falling asleep I think most of us probably were why does it have to start so late um well I guess you could ask why does it have to go to penalties anyway that's another matter but uh, Helen 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 had a little nap around the um around the uh, extra time phase and to be honest I think the best time to take the nap was probably um during the penalties okay so here we are um what have we got today we have got um we're sticking with N-Play. That's our theme for the thing. Um, on Fridays at the moment, we're talking about forcing bids. Um, the BNB Bridge, um, we are changing slightly. We're, we're changing one of the Thursday games to a weekend game. A number of people have requested at least having the opportunity to have a weekend game. So there will be a morning Saturday game on the weekend for those of you who fancy it. Uh, so that's in the BNB Bridge Club. So look out for that. With regard to novices, <clears throat> quite excited. We have got some changes afoot so that we are going to have the begin software uh, embedded as part of our website. And, uh, you know, so I will then focus on the later chapters of that, um, which are very much novice style. Uh, and we will talk, you know, we'll choose a chapter per month and you will have the opportunity to play those hands by yourself and practice. So I'll come back to you on that um, with regard to the novices. But that's nice. I don't get me wrong. You don't have to be a novice to do it, but it is designed for novices. Uh, so we will see. Um, see how that goes, but that that'll hopefully come for August um, and then onwards. So that is exciting. Um, so I will keep you posted. The holidays are still, um, we're still promoting those. Uh, you know, uh, we are hoping, uh, pretty, pretty hopeful that things will be back to normal by October. Um, you know, there looks like there may be a few uh, ups and downs as we go on out of this uh, uh, pandemic. We will see. But let's be honest. I mean, I don't think there was much social distancing going on in some of the pictures I was seeing last night. Uh, so <coughs> I have a feeling a few people felt that it was Freedom Day last night. So we'll see. Um, the offer, special offer of the week this week is the Friday Live. Friday Live. So that's on forcing bids. In fact, we're probably going to be mentioning game forcing bids tomorrow. Not tomorrow, on Friday. Game forcing bids particularly. Uh, so we'll see that. Let's, uh, let's start with our hand evaluation here. So this is, I left you with Friday. Um, and uh, we'll have a look at this. Here we go. Um, I want you to evaluate the hand, decide how much you think it's worth. What I mentioned on Friday was um, that I want you to consider that if the auction goes one diamond from west, not your partner, one diamond from west, pass, pass. Uh, and we will discuss the options available to us. OK, so we'll come back to that after our a little bit on end play. So let's try and do it here. We will also have a chat, I think, about um, live bridge because we're hoping that live bridge will be coming back so we'll have a little chat about that as well okay so end play uh, pretty much talking very similarly to what i talked about last week um then towards the end of this month we are going to be focusing on when your opponents do quite a lot of bidding and you end up playing the hand okay so when your opponents do uh, quite a lot of bidding and you end up playing the hand that can be very important and then the most common end plays come because you know what is in your opponent's hands uh, if you listen to their bidding okay 
So here we go. Definition. Let's remind ourselves of the definition of an end play. Um, you're, you're aiming to force an opponent to give you a trick. Okay. We're aiming to force an opponent to give us a trick. Okay. So, as I say, the perfect end play makes an opponent make a mistake. But also, there's this element, and I keep on about this because it's really important. Every time you give your opponents the lead, you give them the opportunity to give you a trick. Now, what I mean by that is, is if you just try to do everything yourself as De Clara, sometimes you'll make life much easier for the defenders. Whereas if you give the opponents the chance, you'd be surprised at how often they will give you a trick. And particularly, for example, if we think about one no trump as an example, I'm not going to be looking at those kind of hands here, but one no trump is one of those, those uh, contracts that actually... If you let the opponents do it for you, you'll often make more tricks than if you try to do it yourself. OK, so <clears throat> let's just remind ourselves then what the two main elements of end play are. So this is the way I started the, the big seminar. Um, and uh, so let's just put that up. So the two elements are rough and discard and finesse. So rough and discard and finesse. So finesse, most of us know. But of course, a finesse is a 50-50 shot. If you can persuade a particular opponent to lead the suit, sometimes you turn 50-50 into 100%. So if they lead into your ace-queen, as it were. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. The uh, What is a rough and discard? That is a situation where both sides are of your table, as declare and dummy, both hands are void in a suit. If the opponents lead that suit, well, then, of course, you can do two different things. You can rough in one hand, hand and discard in the other. Now, I know it sounds silly, but I'm actually going to call that a discard and rough as well, because there are some people who think it has to be a rough and discard. Well, of course, you can discard in the first hand and rough in the second. And it's important that you consider that carefully, because usually you will only gain by doing it one particular way. So a rough and discard or a discard and rough. What that means is that particularly when the two hands are flat, a mirrored mirror image distribution, you're able to make an extra rough by, by the opponents leading that suit. And of course, generally as a defender, our ambition is not to give away a rough and discard. So what I'm going to do as I'm, in a moment is show two similar hands to last night. Not last night, last week but try to explain what might happen on them. So when you have a finesse for your contract, your aim is not necessarily simply to take that, okay? Because clearly you feel you've got a 50% chance for the contract or for an overtrick for that matter. The aim would be to get your opponents to give you that finesse, okay? Let them have the lead and they might do it, okay? So sometimes, if it's a perfect end play, they are forced to give you. But remember, the opponents can't see your hand. So sometimes they'll lead the suit because they think, oh, well, that might be the right suit to lead. It may not be great defence, but sometimes it happens. Okay. So let's look at um, a nice and simple example Okay, where we're not going to be in a perfect situation. But the point is, we've got a simple plan. OK, so uh, sorry, simple is not the right word. We have a plan. OK, so similar to last week's one, how many tricks have we got off top? I put you in six spades because it's easier for me there. And it, uh, to be honest, you've got so much strength. I think you should probably be there. Um, so you're in six spades. Let's have a lead the queen of clubs, for example. And here, hopefully, you can tot up to 11 top tricks. OK, so there's 11 tricks there. And it's the classic situation. You have a finesse for your slam. OK, so in simple terms, I could win the lead, draw trumps and take a diamond finesse. OK, but my plan is this. My plan is simple. It is to let the opponents have the lead before I take that finesse. Okay, I've got no high for looting plan here, but I'm going to let the opponents have the lead before I take the finesse because they might do the wrong thing. So what I mean by that, well, let's see. OK, so we're thinking end play. Whenever you have a finesse, not, and this isn't just if I was in four spades here, 
I'd still be thinking end play because I'd be thinking I've got a finesse to make 12 checks and I want to make four spades plus two if I'm in if I'm in um, just four spades. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to draw trumps. I'm going to take my winners and hearts and clubs because I might as well. And then I'm just going to let the opponents have a diamond. Now, as some of you will know, OK, as some of you will know, ideally, we need North to have the lead. But it doesn't matter which one has the lead. If North has the lead, he will be end played. If South gets the lead, South will just have the lead. If South does the right thing on the next hand, of course, you know, that's different. OK, so here we've got three winning hearts and two winning clubs. So we've got to win those. So let's take those away. OK, so we draw trumps and we're going to take those winners away. That's straightforward, I hope. So let's say it's two rounds of trumps, ace, king, queen of hearts, ace, king of clubs. Those have gone. Let's finish in the east hand. So we're in a, a good situation here. We haven't lost any tricks. We're clearly going to win three spade tricks. East is on lead. Now, what I could do is take a diamond finesse. OK, and that gives me a 50 50 chance. North wins. Um, and don't forget, North might win the king of diamonds if he's got it and might lead a heart or a club. I hope you can see that if your opponents lead a heart or a club, that rough and discard will give you an extra trick. So remember, there's six tricks. We, we've made seven tricks already. We're definitely making three spades, the ace of diamonds. So that's 11 tricks. If they led a heart, I would be able to rough in one hand and discard in the other. And that will give me a fourth trump trick. So I've got three there, as you can see. If I roughed it as well, I would make four. And that would be enough to make it. So in a perfect world, I'll lead a diamond. South would play small. I put the five in. So I'm not going to take the finesse on the first round. Whether South plays, imagine South played the jack of diamonds here. I would still play a low diamond. OK. Can you see that? It's not perfect. South will probably win the trick, but I'm still going to let South win that trick. Because when South wins that trick, he might not play another diamond. OK. He may not play another diamond. And, and that's the simple thing. So it's not a, it's not perfect. And I'm going to show you the various layouts. OK, so East is on lead. And all I'm doing, because don't forget, I can take the diamond finesse on the next round if I want to. I can cross over to the jack of spades and then take a diamond finesse. So I'm not giving anything up by playing a small diamond. OK, I'm simply just letting the opponents win the trick. OK. I don't think any count on this hand is going to help you. Someone saying I'll oh, play off some more spades here. I don't think you really need to know any more count than you have here. OK, your opponents are, are in a great situation here. OK. I am going to duck the diamond whatever South plays. I would love it if South played the six. OK. So, so whatever South does, I'm playing small. Does that make sense? So let's have a look here. So I've given you some layouts. I will, I will just nip over to um, to Q plus here because it's probably easier, I think, to show it in here. So bear with me and we'll have a look. So you're looking at one layout. Now on this layout, as some of you will point out quite correctly, um, <coughs> so I'm going to go over to Q plus here. So on this layout here, you can see, I'm, I'm going to have the bidding, oh, gosh, okay, that's not what I want. I'm going to have the players again. I'm going to take control of the players if that's all right. I'm actually just going to have a six spade opening bid because it's easy for me. Okay, so I'm not interested in the bidding at all here. Not interested in the bidding at all. Okay, clearly it would not be a six spade opening bid. I cannot um, emphasize that, but I just want to be in the contract. So the Queen of Clubs was led and we decided to very quickly um, take some tricks. So let's just get ourselves to a situation. Okay. Let's put a diamond, uh, maybe a heart there. Okay. 
And then we played off our winners. So we played a club. Okay. And then we played three rounds of hearts. Okay. Like that. And what we did was we led a diamond here. And my plan is to duck. So if South makes the mistake, now a lot of you wouldn't know this was a mistake, but if South plays his lowest diamond, which is the normal thing to do, I play small, North has to win the trick. Okay. North wins the eight of diamonds. What can North do? Clearly, if North leads the king of diamonds, I win it with the ace. And I have the queen. If he leads the ten of diamonds, it runs around to my queen. I've made my contract. If he leads the jack of clubs, I rough and discard. So north is genuinely end played. Okay. So what about if it goes a diamond and south does a great play of going up with the jack? So south thinks... I can see what's going on here. Now that requires good play, but he goes up with the jack because now if I duck, South is on lead. Okay, well, I'm still going to duck, even though I know South is on lead. So I play small. Why am I doing that? Well, because South has five cards in his hand. Now, I know all of you out there will lead a diamond. But there are other players that wouldn't. Okay, one in a hundred may, even if it's only one in a hundred chance, if South leads a club or a heart, I get a rough and discard. If South leads a diamond, I'm going to take the finesse that I was always going to take. And on this occasion, of course, I would go down. But I've given myself the very best chance I have of making the contract. So my plan is to duck the diamond whatever happens. Now if I've got different holdings in diamonds it's a different matter. If I've got ace queen 10 or ace queen 9 and things like that things are slightly different but here with the 5, the 4, the 3 and the 2 of diamonds all I'm thinking is I'm going to take the diamond finesse on the second round of diamonds. Hopefully before that something good happens. So once again we play a diamond. If South makes the mistake of playing small North has to win it, and North is end played. Let's change the hand. Okay, so on this occasion, can you see? Look at what's in the North hand this time. So, well, East West are the same, I should add. Look at what's in the North hand this time. Okay. Now, let's, uh, some of you find that easier to see on the PowerPoint, so I'll, I'll move you to, we'll just go to the PowerPoint and see if you can see it there. Okay, so. What we said on the previous one is South can save the play by playing high. But when I change it to this layout here, there is nothing that North can do. North has to win the first diamond. So if I play small, North has been dealt the King, Jack, 10, 9 of diamonds. Okay, and there's no way that he can avoid winning the first diamond. So as long as I don't take a finesse on the first round, North will have to win. And as we've seen, he will be end played. OK, so it is worth doing just for this case. So South would probably you know, play try the eight of diamonds, but it, unfortunately for him, his partner cannot underplay his card. Clearly, if we finesse on the first round of diamonds, North can win the king and then play the jack back. Can you see the difference? North is able to win the queen with the king and then, of course, he's not end played. His jack, ten, nine of diamonds are going to make a trick. OK, so he leads the jack of diamonds back and we end up losing both the king of diamonds and the jack. Okay. On another hand, as I say here, unfortunately, it doesn't require a genius for South to win the first diamond. So it goes a diamond. When we lead the diamond, South has to play the jack 10 or 9 and clearly North can underplay that comfortably. But the crucial element here, OK... The crucial element here is that self will not always do the right thing. If, you've, if you play against defenders that always do the right things, I advise you to find better opponents. I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> less good opponents. So the, the point here is by ducking, okay, by ducking, you 
are giving the opponents a chance to go wrong. It may only gain one in a hundred times. It might just be a misclick. Who knows? If you're playing online, maybe they're thinking, oh, I know what to do. I should play another diamond. They misclick and play a heart instead or something like that. OK, now, of course, we'd, we'd allow them to undo, of course, but we would have seen glory in our minds. OK, so the, the crucial thing here is we are not taking the diamond finesse as early as possible. We are giving the opponents a chance to go wrong and sometimes our one opponent is stuck on lead anyway and if it's north on lead we make our contract okay okay let's look at a very similar one okay and and and, and i can't emphasize that bit there enough giving the opponents the chance to go wrong is worth it i would say one in 24 hands i play on the teams where i give the opponents the chance to go wrong they do now, of course, a lot of you go, I can't believe they did that. Oh, wow. But most of us are thinking, gosh, I'm glad someone else does that. OK, now here it's put probably pretty obvious. But South's probably thinking to himself, why is why? Why has he ducked my nine of diamonds? Why has he left me on lead? I think he's trying to be cunning. And sometimes you'll outthink yourself. You'll think, well, I bet you he wants me to lead a diamond back. I'll lead something else. Of course, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. Of course not. But sometimes we will. OK. Let's look at a very similar hand. OK, and again, you know, very similar theme. No massive plan to what we're going to be doing here. All we're doing is trying to do the best we can. OK, so let's have a look. Four spades we're in this time. OK, similar situation. Ace of clubs is led. However, most of the time this looks like a comfortable contract. Hopefully either the diamond finesse is going to be for the contract um, or it may be for an over trick. OK, so nine top tricks. Hope you're happy with that. Nice five spades there. Ace king, queen of hearts, ace of diamonds. Notice we wouldn't count the fourth heart yet, but we're very hopeful that the fourth heart will make us a trick. OK. And the finesse will then give us an extra trick. So if hearts break 3-2, we'll have 10 tricks and the diamond finesse will give us 11th. And we won't be able to give a lead away there because I have a feeling the opponent's going to take the first two tricks here. Wouldn't surprise me if they go ace, king, queen of clubs. We will rough the third round. Notice that rough of a club does not gain a trick. We've counted five trump tricks. When we rough a club, we go down to four trump tricks and a rough. OK, because we're roughing in the long trump hand. OK, so whenever that finesse is a chance, I'm thinking end play. As you're going to find, if the hearts break 3-2, you won't have the opportunity. You'll have, all, you'll have 10 tricks and the diamond finesse will give you 11. Clearly, if you give a trick away after having lost the first two, you'll be down to 10 anyway. OK. OK, so once again, I'm thinking end play. And the idea is I'll leave the diamond finesse for as long as I can. OK, and that's the crucial element here. So what we're going to do is just play as you naturally will. You're going to play. You're going to have the ace, king, queen of clubs led against you. You're going to rough the third round. You're going to draw trumps and you're going to cash your hearts, finishing in the east hand. OK, so you rough the third hand and draw trumps. And unfortunately, the trumps break 4-1. Sorry, the hearts break 4-1. Apologies, trumps break normally. But the heart break for one. What is your plan? And what I want you to do is make a plan if North has the four hearts and make a plan if South has the four hearts. Well, the key on this hand is if North has the four heart, you can play the fourth round of heart and end play him. OK, remember that you will have no clubs left in your hand. Because the first three rounds have gone. And if North has the last heart, when you lead the fourth round, he will be stuck on lead. There will be nothing that he can do. What happens if South has four hearts? I'm going to do exactly the same. And the reason I'm going to do exactly the same is it doesn't cost me anything to do it. So I'm going to play a fourth round of hearts and leave South on lead. Now, clearly, South can lead a diamond. But 
That's what I was going to do anyway. I was going to take a diamond finesse anyway, so I'm not losing anything there. Can you see the idea? So all I'm doing is leaving south on lead. If he leads a diamond, I'll take the finesse. If he leads anything else, I will get a rough and discard. It will be a bad play for him to lead anything else, but he might do it. And that is why we give him the lead. So rather than taking the diamond finesse, I'm going to give the opponents the lead. If North has the lead, he's end play. If South has the lead, he's just got the lead and he might do the wrong thing. So again, it's the layouts could be either. So I'll show you, I'm, I'll just show you on Q+. Plus. So I'll let you look at one of the layouts there. I bet it, I'll get us to the situation on Q+, plus there. And um, again, I'm just going to put you in four spades with no bidding, so that's easy. Okay, let's go to it. Let's go and show you it. So we're in four spades here. Don't worry about the bidding there, and we will just quickly play the first few tricks off. We rough. We draw a couple of trumps. Very simple plan. Like that. We then play the hearts off, thinking this is an easy life. I'm going to take my four heart tricks. But of course, um, they break badly. But we are happy if it's north, completely happy, because we are 100% making the contract. Because when we play the fourth round of hearts, north is going to be stark, isn't it? OK, so let's do it. OK. So here, North can lead a diamond or a club. If he leads a club, clearly I hope you can see if he leads a diamond, we make the ace and queen. He leads the king, we kill it. Leads a small one, we win that with the queen. If he leads the ten of clubs, we can discard and rough. Okay, and now the ace of diamonds is a winner. And you can rough the rest. Okay, so there's no North is end played. In the other example... Um, we'll just quickly move on to that. Let me just go on to the next deal there. Okay, so I've moved the hearts the other way. Just ignore the bidding, please. I'm just doing that. I don't want to think about the bidding on this one. That's why I'm sim oh, excuse me. That's why I'm simply doing four spades, pass, 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 if that's okay. I'm in control of all the hands, so don't feel anybody's being misled. Okay, so please ignore the bidding. Um, okay, so play another club here and the d the defense have played out clubs so we rough it again we draw trumps and we're doing the same plan you may have got i'll just cross over to the queen there and we plan again we're playing hearts okay There are two ways of playing this. Andy's pointed out an, an, another way of playing it. You could try on this hand if you knew where the King of Diamonds was. So if you were a pessimist and knew the King of Diamonds was failing, you could actually end play North by playing Ace, Queen of Diamonds. But you don't know who's got the King of Diamonds. So that, to me, is in a way putting all eggs in one basket. Okay, Because clearly if the Diamond Finesse works here, you're going to make. Um, okay, so... You know, if the diamond finesse works here, OK, um, you're going to make. Whereas if you play ace, queen of diamonds and south wins the king of diamonds here, you're going to look silly when he cashes the jack of hearts. OK, but it is a way of playing, undoubtedly. And if you knew on the bidding, and this is what in a week's time we'll be looking with bidding. OK, we'll be looking with bidding. OK. Yeah, playing another trump's not the worst thing. Uh, on this hand to, to see if they discard something. Perfectly reasonable play. Uh, you know, someone suggesting that if we play another round of trumps, South might discard a heart. You know, um, he happens to have good ones, but they might do it. So it's not the worst play. I don't mind that. Um, bearing in mind, though, if you're doing that, I want you to keep an entry to dummy. So I need you to cash the king of spades and keep the jack of spades to get to dummy. OK, so here, the key here is that all I'm doing is I don't mind, you know, all I'm going to do is play a heart. And the reason I'm doing that 
is just to give the opponents the chance to go wrong. I mean, I would expect South 89%, 95%, 99 99% of the time to lead a diamond here. It's the right thing to do. But believe you me, people lose concentration in a hand. They think, well, my jack of clubs, I might as well force them to up. There will be one in a hundred people who play the jack of clubs in. Okay. So why not give them the opportunity? Does that make sense? So, and not clearly, if they do play the jack of clubs, I make. Unfortunately, if they don't, South plays a diamond. I'm, I was going to take the diamond finesse anyway. So I haven't lost anything. I do go down. When the diamond finesse loses, I do go down, but I haven't lost anything because I was going to take that diamond finesse anyway. And that's the crucial thing. OK, so if South does the right thing, I'm doing just what I was going to do. Because remember, if South had the king of diamonds, he would equally play that diamond. OK. All right. So the key is when I'm just going to come back to power. When and we'll go to the second hand. Then, when I have a finesse for a contract, I contemplate I almost always try to delay it or let the opponents have the chance to give me it. OK, as you've seen a couple of times here, there are layouts that will force your opponents to give it. Now, as you've seen in the seminar, those of you who have seen it, and as we're going to talk about, we are going to make some plans. So in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be looking at, 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 at hands where you can plan. And the reason you can plan is because your opponents... Um, your opponents have bid. And when your opponents bid, they tell you all sorts of things about their hand. And so one example will be they'll, they'll I love two suited two suited overalls, two no trumps to show an unusual hand with five five in the minors. The problem is, is it does describe your hand rather well, doesn't it? And we're gonna see that and it's gonna make a big difference to our plans. Okay, so we'll see that next week. Okay, what are we doing now? Um yeah, we, we've got live bridge coming, so I'm excited about that. I, my, my first live bridge is going to be in October, so I'm hoping things are back on. But I'm hoping some clubs are going to get back, and I'd love you to report back. So do send some emails and on your... Um, I know I Love Man and places like that have been doing this. It's, uh, they've been doing it for some time, obviously in New Zealand and places like that. But, but in England and, and the UK as a whole, Scotland and Wales, interesting to get your feedback on how you plan to do it. The EBU, of course, are running their Summer Congress um, in Eastbourne live. Uh, I think that's a good thing. And so hopefully we'll get some pictures from that. And that's going to encourage us to get back. I think it's a good thing to get back. I think having a balance between online bridge and live bridge is good as well. I'm not, you know, I think a number of us have had experiences. I mean, it's one of the reasons I wanted to do the eight board duplicates, experimenting with eight board duplicates, because I think online, that's a lovely number, allows you to play a quick game, doesn't affect your day, eight o'clock until nine o'clock in the morning or something like that, or or, you know, so, uh, and, and I know a few of you have liked that. Some of you think that it's complete anathema playing at eight o'clock in the morning. And I can understand that as well. Before I had a child, eight o'clock was pretty early for me. Now eight o'clock is like mid-afternoon. So um, let's, uh, let's have a look at the, um, let's go to the hand evaluation hand if I can. Let's go there. So hand evaluation that we looked at there, so let's have a look at that. Um, now, I'll, I'll actually look, let you see the, all the hands there, um, and, and we'll look at the auction. So we're evaluating the south hand. Okay, now first and foremost, it's important for me that you understand that that hand is worth more than eight points. Ace-10-9, Jack-10-9, as well as throwing Queen-Jack-9-8 there, it is a powerful hand. I don't, I'm not going to go much more than nine, to be honest, um, because I don't tend to add on more than a, a point for my tens and nines, but it is a good nine to me. Now, what you have to decide, what you have to decide as a player is what you're going to reopen with. So it goes one dime from west. North has no suitable bid. He's got a decent hand. He's got 12 high card points. He's got a lovely 10 himself. And honours combining, but he's got good diamonds. He's got no reason to bid, so he passes. And as you can see, east is certainly going to pass as well. So the bidding comes round to you. I'm pretty aggressive in the last seat. You've got to decide what number of points so for example if i gave you um if i gave you 
eight points without the tens and nines, would you reopen with a double? Now, I'm going to be honest, I would. OK, I would. Uh, but you've got to decide where your level is. And I felt that some of you with a bad eight points might not reopen. Otherwise, I change this hand to seven points. Because if I had, if I changed the jack of hearts into the seven of hearts, I would still be reopening with a double. Because I love to keep the bidding open when I am very short in their suit. Change it to a double and it's different. So, of course, what we do here, OK, is we are borrowing a king. Remember, you only borrow a king when there has been an opening bid. So one diamond. It's not when it goes pass, pass, pass. It's when there's been an opening suit bid here. And the reason we borrow a king is exactly because of North's hand. North has got 12 points or 12 or 13 points. Here, 12 points. He can't bid because he's got length in their suit. If they'd opened a heart, of course, your partner would have doubled for takeout. But he can't over one diamond. So it's up to us to do the bid. And so I want you with about eight points to reopen. Whatever your borderline is here, if your borderline is I need nine to reopen, that's why I've given you your tens and nines there, because to me, this hand is worth nine points. OK, I'm going to be honest. I tend to reopen with eight points. OK, uh, you know, so um, I hope you're happy with that. The evaluation of the hand should be around nine points and you need to double here. Confident. As you can see, to be honest, the two hands should probably reach two or three spades. I don't think you're going to manage to make four spades. You haven't got the strength for it. But the key is you need to be in a spade contract. One diamond is going to wander home. Comfort uh, is probably going to make, I think, relatively easily. Um, you know, they've got five top tricks and they should make a couple of um, probably a couple of diamonds there. You, yes, because you can't draw them. So. Um, they're likely to make one diamond, which is worth 70 to them. Instead, we're making probably 140. And if the, if the defence goes wrong, you might even make 170. Notice North is going to be excited in response to the double. OK, North, uh, South is going to be uh, North is going to be excited, but he knows we would borrow a king. So your partner will probably um, make a cubit of some sort. Although I think so. I mean, let's just put it in. We're going to have a look at the auction. I think South is West is probably going to bid again here. OK, once West bids again, I would have thought North now is better off bidding two spades to jump to two spades. He's, remember, he's aceless. And I think that's enough. OK. I think that's enough of a bid on his hand, to be honest, with the aceless nature. And that will probably finish the auction. East might dredge up a bid. Note that East has got 11 losers, though. I mean, you know, the reason why North is bidding two spades is because he has a really good hand. He's got a singleton as well. I don't mind you bidding the opponent's suit. I really don't if you bid two hearts here or two diamonds. Probably two diamonds is better because two hearts. OK, I don't mind you uh, bidding, but I also think two spades is reasonable. And I think that will probably finish the auction. Um, you may get to three spades and I think three spades is going to be comfortable. I think probably um, the opponents are going to draw your trumps and you're only going to manage nine tricks there. Someone asked if the opponents had opened one heart here. Well, of course, it would have been doubled by North. If North had a different hand and it went one heart pass, pass, we would pass. OK, we would pass. North has jumped deliberately because North has a good, strong hand, remember? Um, so two spades should show about probably a little less than this. But I feel with an aceless hand, two spades is probably high enough. But it's important that North does jump because, remember, South hasn't necessarily borrowed a king. And if South had another change the jack of spades to the ace of spades, we would want to be in four there okay so um that's an interesting one last in hand and i'm sure we'll be revisiting exactly lord north knows we're born king but north is powerful don't forget those of you who count losers it's one two three four five six losers yes it's aceless so you might make it six and a half but it's a better than an opening hand with the singleton okay except the queen jack ten of diamonds are perhaps not so useful and that's what we find in the play OK, so, you know, North is North is powerful and it's important that he bids two spades. And as you can see, it makes sure you compete and, and it gets your strength across to your partner. OK, um, I've got some prize winners. I've got a lot of prize winners. Interestingly, Martin Winter is the prize winner for this week. So well done to Martin. Now, Martin, you are not playing in July. You are playing in August and I will email you with respect to that. But I have three other people who haven't been emailed yet. So that is Nikki Kakar. 
I've got no idea how to pronounce this name, but I'm going to give it my best ch uh, best uh, effort. This is Theropathy Jezadason. Theropathy Jezadason and Angela Gilbert. Those three have won in past weeks, but I haven't drawn their seat yet at the table. So Nikki, Theropathy and Angela will be playing in July. You'll be playing in one of these three seats. Okay, the first card will be Nikki, then Therapy and Angela, and I'll be emailing you. You'll be joining joining Elaine, I think, who's already won a seat on that one. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, the first winner is Nikki, and Nikki would be in seat three, which is north south at the other table. Next, we have uh, Therapy. Uh, you are going to be my partner, Therapy. So well done to you. And Angela, you will be in seat four, which is east-west, uh, which will be my teammates at the other table. So I'll be emailing those winners. Um, last but not least, I'm going to tell Martin where he's going to play. Sorry about so many things going on. So Martin, which seat are you going to be on? You're going to be in one of these four seats, but this is in August. In August, you will be playing against me as east-west. Okay, don't don't worry. Those of you who have one, I will be sending you an email with regard to that. But I've got to remember which who got what there. Uh, okay, I'll put it in the right order there. Otherwise, I'll forget. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, so let's uh, let's. I didn't do the uh, I didn't do the tip from last time, did he? I, that's true. I could watch the t the the replay. Thanks for that. OK, let's just go back and have a quick look at the tip of the day this time, because I did say I put it in, so let's do it. Not a simple tip of the day here, but an important one. Um, and we've cut, come across this before, OK, uh, and I want to emphasise it. So when you get doubled, whether you're novice, OK, or you're an expert or whatever, Experts, of course, are used to this, but when you're a novice and you're doubled, do not panic. Okay, do not panic. That's the most important thing here. Okay, do not panic. Okay, so when you're double for penalties, if you can, use the information to your advantage. Okay, but whatever you do, don't assume you're going down. That's the most important thing. A lot of people, when they get doubled, assume they're going down and they, they end up going an extra one down. OK, so th this is, in a sense, a very straightforward hand, although a very complicated hand in, in another way. But the crucial thing is, if you, I think this hand plays itself. Okay, This hand is going to play itself as long as you get doubled. If you don't get doubled, it won't play itself. Okay, And this is interesting. So have a look. One spade, two spades, four spades. I'm not saying you want to, or you want it to bid that way, but that's the way you decided to bid it. It's not the worst bidding. Um, it's it's basically west overbidding slightly. I'm missing a card from the east hand. That's annoying. Really irritates me when I do that. But anyway, let's uh, uh, let's throw uh, another diamond in there. Um, yeah, let's throw another diamond in there. Gosh, that's annoying. I have actually got it on here, so I can probably tell what the hand is. Bear with me. So the last bid in the auction, of course, is uh, sorry, is a double, and that's the crucial element to this auction. OK, so the last bid in the auction is um, is a double. OK, and now, um, OK, I think I've got it here. Yes, I have. So I just want to see what the last hand card is. No, it's four hearts. So let's, let's I, I've got the, the, the hand up here. So let's show it on, on, on Q+. So you can see the hands there. And you can see that North's got a reasonable double. OK. He's got a completely reasonable double. Okay, well, I, sorry. It's a reasonable double. I don't think it's the right bid, but I think it's a reasonable double. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly repeat that bidding so that I can get it up here. I apologise for not getting the um, thing. Okay, so I think actually it could have gone one spade, three spades, four spades, to be honest. So it goes pass, pass, double. At this point, you look at the two hands when dummy comes down and you think, Do you know, we're in a reasonable contract here. East might have jumped to three spades, but I think we're in a reasonable contract here. The only reason I can think that North is doubling is that he has all of the spades. That's the only reason. And if I take advantage of that, we're going to end up using the topic of the, of the month. And we're not doing it deliberately. We are just going to use our small trumps to rough. 
will cross off the hand and as it happens poor old north is going to get end play but the key is is not to panic don't take a spade finesse and think i bet you that spade finesse is gonna fall. oh sorry apologies um alan thank you for that um let's pretend that north doubled apologies north is the doubler um okay north is the doubler okay so just ignore me as usual. OK, so the play is very straightforward. You get the king of clubs lead and all I want you to do is not panic. And what that means is take your winners, do some roughing and see what happens. I don't want I don't need you to plan anything more than that. Just try and make a few small trumps. So we'll take a rough, maybe take the ace and king of hearts. I think after that, I'll probably take the ace and king of diamonds as well. OK, hopefully that will make as well. And once they do, I'm, I'm getting quite happy now. I've made six tricks. You know, I've got the ace of spades is seven. I'm feeling reasonably happy. I'm just going to rough a club. And I'm going to rough a heart. Now you can see North is getting a sinking feeling. <laughs> OK, what can North do? And actually, North ends up end playing himself. There's nothing he can do. We have done nothing spectacular here. As long as we just relax, do not worry that we're doubled. As I say, I think North, a lot of Norths would double on a hand like this. But, you know, we've made eight tricks. We just lead, lead the eight of clubs. What can North do? And this is what you might call a suicide end play. I suppose North could play a small one, but he'll give an extra trick. So North ends up roughing with the nine. And obviously, North's in a horrible situation here. So he is end played. He has to give us a trick. He leaves the jack of spades. Um, okay, we win the queen. And we're happy enough. We can't make an extra trick. We'd lead a diamond. You never know. It might work. But I'm f he can rough with the two of diamond spades and then exit. But we have made our contract. Okay. We didn't expect to necessarily, um, but we've made our contract. So should North double? I don't know. I mean, let me just show you that on the PowerPoint here so that you can see it. Okay. I'll... So we just simply did not finesse. There's the final layout. He is sitting there with 13 points and five spades to the King Jack 10-9. Those of you who are used to seeing hands and acelessness again will suspect that when you've got a hand like this, there may be some distribution around. Uh, it doesn't take much. All it needs is a doubleton club in the opponent's hand and you are going to take the contract down. So I think on a lot of occasions you will take four spades down. You might take it two off and therefore I don't think it's the worst double. So do not feel that um, I would be very angry with you if you doubled. You know, it turns out that the losing diamond doesn't even lose. I mean, you know, I think... Note it, not only that, the opponents might not have all the aces and kings, you know. So I think it's perfectly reasonable. If you are undoubled, it's possible you should play the contract in the same way. But if you're undoubled, you're thinking the spades might break well here. If the spade finesse works, or I might be able to rough this, you know, I think you may end up taking a finesse. So I think you may go down nastily. Um... But anyway, the tip, as I say, I'm going to just simply go back to the tip there. Let's just go, is just do not panic. One no trump doubled, a really common contract. In your, if you're in one no trump doubled, I would imagine a lot of other people will be in it as well. Dummy comes down with six or seven points, think I might have a chance here. You know a lot about your opponent's hands. Try to use it. And do not worry if you go down. Remember, I like you to get an 800 every so often, a minus 800. So do not worry. Take it as part of your learning experience. So when you are doubled, do not panic. Play, Try to play it as you would a normal hand. OK, well, I've, I've run out of time here. So I'm not going to show you a, a nice hand that Richard sent me in. So I'll keep that one for next time. So I've got a nice end play hand to show you then. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. We're going to be looking at using the opponent's bidding from now on and end playing them on the back of that. And that is quite important because we hate it when the opponents bid against us. So being able to use their bidding against them is a really handy thing um, and really important. So my, my thumb is poised above the bidding quiz button, so I will put that down. There you go. 
Uh, there's your bidding quiz. Don't forget the answers are on the site, etc. I should remind you while you're looking at this bidding quiz. Two no trumps you opened. OK, I'm just having a look. 10, 21 points, I think. And then your partner's made a transfer of three hearts. So two no trumps, three hearts. Transfer is your bid. I should remind you that you can always join um, BNB. Don't forget that. Uh, and those of you who've never had a go, you can get a two week free trial. Um, so do come and see us. Um, you, might, you can just look at the bidding quiz anyway, of course. Um, and I'm going to be emailing you those novices out there who aren't members of the site once we get up and running with this new um, new idea for novices. So I will be in touch. OK, so two no trumps pass, three hearts transfer, and it's your bid. Hope you enjoyed that. Enjoy the rest of the week. I think certainly down in the south, the weather is going to perk up. So I'll be looking forward to that. I may see some of you on Wednesday. Wednesday, we are back at 7.30. Don't forget, 7.30 for our teams on Wednesday. And we're talking forcing bids on Friday. So hopefully might see a few extra of you on there. So thanks for your time and see you soon.